Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at powers of 10 today. We're going to see a lot of zeros, so hopefully it doesn't make your eyes go all bonkers. Let's take a look. Powers of 10. Powers of 10 kind of look like this. 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4. Maybe you're noticing some patterns here. Um, hopefully you did notice some patterns. And I'm going to tell you about two patterns that I noticed. Number one, the exponent is the number of zeros. Okay, that's one pattern that I noticed. The other pattern that I noticed, and you may might have overlooked this, is you are shifting. In, when you're adding a zero, what you're really doing is shifting a decimal. So what we're doing is moving the decimal farther and farther and farther to the right. And that's a, probably a better way to think about it, and I'll tell you why when we get to the next couple of slides. Let's take a look. What happens when we multiply times the power of 10? Well, 5 times 10 to the power of 1 is 50. 3 times 10 to the power of 2 is 300. 7 times, power to the, times 10 to the power of 3 is 7,000. Again, there are some patterns here. And I would like to emphasize that the pattern should be thought of as not the number of zeros, but how far you move the decimal, and that's important. So with these numbers like 5 and 3 and 7, notice those numbers are here at the end, 5, 3, and 7. But with the number 5, there's an implied decimal that sits right here. With the number 3, it sits right there. With the number 7, it sits right there. All of those decimals start right here. And look at this, we're moving the decimal three places to the right. We're moving the decimal two places to the right. We're moving the decimal one place to the right. And if we think about it in terms of moving a decimal, I think that will help with our future lessons on scientific notation, but it'll also help when we move into talking about our next topic. Our next topic is negative exponents. Negative exponents work kind of the same if you think about it as shifting decimals. Because 10 to the power of negative 1 is 0 0.1. 10 to the power of negative 2, 0 0.01. 10 to the power of negative 3, 0 0.001. 10 to the power of negative 4, 0 0.0001. Notice it's not the number of zeros anymore, but it's the number of places we move the decimal if we start at the number 1. If we start at the number 1, we shift at one place for this two places for this one, three places for this one. And you can see that pattern continuing. And it will continue when we multiply numbers times these powers of 10. Let me show you. We'll start off with the number 2. When we multiply that times the pow 10 to the power of negative 1, it shifts the decimal one place to the left. Now 6 times 10 to the power of negative 2, we're shifting that decimal that started out here, we're now shifting it two places to the left. Now we're shifting it three places to the left. It starts right here and goes 1, 2, 3. That's how these decimals work. The patterns are shifting decimals, and we have to remember that. Shifting decimals is the pattern. That's the, the key thing that we're looking at. We're not looking at the number of zeros, but how far we move the decimal one way or another. If the exponent is negative, we're shifting the decimal to the left and making the number smaller, as you can see here. If the exponent is positive, then we're shifting the decimal to the right and making the number larger. Now that we've covered that, I want to actually go to one more thing inside of this lesson. And that's when you have to compare two numbers that are both multiplied times powers of 10. So we have 2 times 8, 10 to the power of 8 and 2 times 10 to the power of 9. When we look at these two numbers, you'll notice the only difference is the exponent value. We have an exponent value of 8 on the first number and 9 on the second number. That means that the second number is 10 times larger, or 10 to the power of 1 times larger. With our next example, I'm going to use different numbers. 9 times 10 to the power of 7, and 3 times 10 to the power of 6. The exponents are different. Um, there's a 7 on the first number, and the exponent of 
is a 6 on the second one. But also the numbers are different, 9 and 3. So we have to look at a couple of things. One, the exponent changing by 1 means that it is 10 times, the first number is 10 times larger than the second number. The fact that we have to multiply it times 3 to get from 3 to 9 means that it's not 3 times larger, but now it is 30 times larger, or 3 times larger and 10 times larger. Okay, 3 times 10 would give us that 30. And I know that that's a complicated concept, but if you practice with it comparing these numbers, it'll come become a little bit more clear. Also, um, you could write them out, but that would make your life a little bit more difficult. Okay, so writing them out all the way is, is not, not going to really save you time, but just remembering that the exponent, when it, the difference between the exponents is um, powers of 10. So if it's different by 2, it's 10 to the power of 2. If it's different by 3, it's 10 to the power of 3. Let's look at negative exponents. They work exactly the same way. Um, so here is here are two numbers, and the difference between them is 10 to the power of negative 3. And negatives are, they sort of throw us off when we're, when we're working with them in general, and when they're exponents, they throw us off again. They make our minds work a little bit differently. This second number is really, really small. It's a thousand times smaller than this number. And that sounds weird to us because 9 is bigger than 6. But we have to remember that negative 9 is actually smaller than negative 6. The larger the negative number, the smaller it is. So 5 times 10 to the power of negative 9 is much smaller than 5 times 10 to the power of negative 6. And the difference between these numbers, 6 and 9, is 3. So the second number is 10 to the power of negative 3 times different, or in other words, 1,000 times smaller than the first number. This one here may take a little bit of practice to get our heads wrapped around. Let's do another one just to kind of work with this. All right, 2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 and 8 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Take a look at that and try and figure out which one's bigger, which one's smaller. Hopefully we've been able to recognize that 10 to the power of negative 5 and 10 to the power of negative 3, the difference there is 100. Just the, this number, 10 to the power of negative 5, is 100 times smaller than 10 to the power of negative 3. Then the negative exponent means that it's the larger negative exponent means that that's smaller. The fact that the numbers are different by 2 means that it's a 100 times difference. Now let's look at this number, 2 and 8. You have to multiply 2 times 4 to get to this number. So now we have to multiply 2 times 4, and we have to multiply our total number times 100. So the first number is actually 400 times smaller than the second number. I know that negative exponents are kind of make our brain work backwards, so I encourage you to practice this a little bit. Um, hopefully me talking through the logic of it has helped. You might want to try writing out the numbers. What does this actually mean? And shift the decimal over. What does this one mean? Shift the decimal over and practice. If you take the larger number divided by the smaller number, you'll get that difference. So um, that's a good way to check your work as well. So I hope that lesson was helpful for you, not too confusing. I know shifting decimals and working with negative exponents can be a little tough, but hopefully that lesson was helpful for you, and have a wonderful day. Here is the Common Core anchor and eligible content for your reference.